you're watching America Trends. I'm Mary Burke Godwin, and I'm very excited to talk to our next guest. She's been on before. Her name is Jacqueline Newman. She is a divorce attorney and a managing partner of Berkman, Botgar, Newman, and Shine. And you know, yesterday on one of uh, the segments, I was talking about buying an ex a present for my ex-husband for Christmas, and my interviewee was like, wait, you buy a present for your ex-husband and his wife? And I said, yeah. And I realized that I'm very lucky and blessed in my situation with my ex-husband that we get along and we have a good, you know, working co-parenting relationship. And then that's not necessarily the case for a lot of people. Um, so, and I know that right now during COVID particularly, there's a lot of issues that are coming up with partners or ex-spouses that may not be seeing eye to eye on masks and COVID and vaccines and traveling. So Jacqueline, welcome to back to America Trends. Thanks so much for having me. Yes, I'm, I'm so glad. I remember we talked, I think, over the summer and we were talking about, you know, it's not necessarily, I mean, I don't know, maybe you can tell me how many ex-spouses that you see that actually do get along or, or a lot of them fight or what, what is the, the percentages there? I don't know the exact percentages, but I would say, you know, you are one of the lucky ones. Let's put it that way. Um, I think it is really nice. And, you know, I do see it. I'm not going to pretend it doesn't happen. But at least in the situations I'm in where there is a lot of litigation, people are fighting, you know, a lot <laughs> and they're not getting along. But I like to think that years after they leave my office that they're in a better place. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe right away it's challenging to get along because there's probably lots of you know, turmoil and feelings in the way. And then as years pass, it's certainly easier. I mean, this was, I think, the fifth Christmas that we had all spent together, or maybe fourth. And it certainly gets easier as time goes by. Um, but I do, you know, I'm definitely lucky in that case. But I want to talk to you about people that may be in this situation and maybe facing like the legalities of if one spouse refuses to themselves get vaccinated or to wear masks and then and or doesn't want their kill their child to get vaccinated. Are you seeing a lot of fighting in that w way and a lot of, uh, you know, taking people to court over that? Yeah, so it's been very challenging, and absolutely, we do see a lot of it. Uh, we actually had a case in our office where a father refused to vaccinate, and the court actually said that he is not to see his child until he vaccinates, unless he tests before seeing his child. The child was young and not able to be vaccinated herself. And so we are seeing it. We're seeing courts taking it very seriously. Um, and more and more, you know, especially now that we're in a, another round of right. know, COVID and everybody's going back into lockdown a little bit. Um, the courts are definitely taking it seriously and they will take the steps to protect the children. Yeah, so a court, you had to take that case. Let's say somebody came to you and said, Eeks, my ex-spouse will refuse to be vaccinated. So they then you had to go to court and see a judge and have the judge rule on that. And then they ruled in favor of the parent that said you have to get tested in order to see your child. That's correct. Wow, there must be a lot of emotions going into this because even without the kids involved, this is a very heated emotional situation for everyone. You're seeing it play out on airplanes or in restaurants and in different places all over the internet. Um, so I can imagine when you're already kind of having issues with an ex to bring that into the mix because then the child, especially if they're young and the child can't speak for themselves as to what they want, right? I mean, kids 12 to 15 can be vaccinated now, but... Are you seeing, you know, it with kids, with younger kids, maybe two to 10? Yeah, I mean, that, that's where the challenges come in. I mean, the children that can't be vaccinated, I mean, you have your first set of challenges when a child can be vaccinated and the parents aren't agreeing. But when a child can't be vaccinated, then it really, they turn to the parents and they say, okay, well, you need to surround your child with people that are vaccinated. And should you choose not to do that, you know, some courts, especially, you know, at least I can say in New York, are taking a position that, you know, that's not protecting your child and it's not in the child's best interest. And therefore, you know, they're restricting access, parental access. Now, again, I think if you're outside of New York, you may be experiencing different things. The courts may look at things differently, but New York, and especially this was also New York City, which is taking vaccinations, you know, very, very seriously. Right. Yeah, actually, that just reminded me of another question, you know, because that is New York. So they are leaning maybe one way. And even maybe within the city, are you seeing any some judges going one way and others judges going another? Or has there been a precedent set within the state of New York? And then maybe that's going to be different in a different state. Like you said, that may be more lenient with vaccinations and masks. Right. So, I mean, it's very fact specific, you know, and there isn't a ton of precedent on this because, you know, even if you have a case and you settle it, 
you know, by the time a case gets published and they don't even publish every case and, you know, in most cases do settle. So you really have to have a trial decision or a decision after any type of motion or oral argument to be able to have some sort of precedent. So there's not a ton of it. Um, and I do think that different judges are going to handle things differently based on whatever facts are presented. But the case I was specifically referring to was a New York City case. And so can I say the same fact pattern would follow, you know, outside of the city? I really don't know. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me, you know, if outside of New York it's treated differently than inside of New York. And you'd think, I mean, I would think uh, you'd want to to work it out, you know, in your office or outside of the courtroom because then you don't have to have all the fees and all the time spent, right? I mean, is there a case, have you been able to negotiate, you know, in your office one-on-one -on -one or, you know, with maybe the other ex-spouses attorney too and you guys can maybe come to a decision um, and help kind of facilitate that relationship and that decision making before it has to go to trial? Absolutely. I mean, we have been able to settle a lot of these issues. I mean, this is a tough one because it's not like, you know, if there's a two shot, you get one shot and it's compromised. It's kind of, you know, either you're doing it or you're not. Um, I am finding, though, that, you know, a lot of times when people were, you know, resisting shots, a lot of it was based on misinformation. And so part of what has kind of bridged the gap in some of my cases is really as more and more information comes out. And, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of people are scared. They just don't know the vaccine is new and people just don't know how it's going to impact their child. So it's not as if they're saying, I don't want to give the vaccine. I don't want to protect my child. I'm just concerned about what the future will bring. Um, and so you're getting a lot of those kind of conversations. And I think the more that people talk about it and you know, the more it doesn't become as much of a power play between the parties and they're really in a situation of saying, let's hear each other, let's hear the concerns and address them. I think we've been able to come to a lot of resolutions outside of court. Yeah, that, that's great. And, and more facts are coming out as more time goes by about the vaccination or vaccine. Um, I wanted to ask you, I think last time you were on, it was earlier in the summer and um, you know, now we're almost two years into COVID and I want to see, you know, what are you seeing patterns wise of divorce rates? Are people, you know, are they going up in general? Are people just done and saying, hey, I got to live my life and I want out? Or are people hunkering down and saying, you know what, I want to make this work? Are you seeing any patterns like that? So um, in the beginning, I think there was a lot of hunkering down. And that really was my advice in the beginning, you know, especially if you had a marriage that, you know, was going okay, it wasn't awful, but then COVID struck and then everybody thought things were terrible and they figured, how can I stay married to this person? So I, my original advice to people was really, don't take this, what I thought was going to be a very small blip on the radar and let it impact the way you're going to see your entire marriage. However, COVID has continued. And I think now we're in a situation where a lot of people said, I took your advice, I waited, and I still feel the same way. And so you are seeing a lot more people filing. Also, the courts were closed initially, which obviously slowed down any kind of court filing. But a lot more people are moving forward. Um, it's interesting, you know, January, we call it divorce month, um, because it usually is the month where a lot of people will come and they'll say, I don't want to end the year the same way I started it. And so they come and they get a lot of information. And I am seeing, you know, more phone calls coming in, but I do think it's a little slower than what, at least I mean, we're only in the fourth day of the month, but <laughs> I find it a little slower than... <laughs> I have in the past, and I wonder if that's partially because of the fact that, you know, we are going through another round, and so people are kind of seeing themselves being locked in their homes locked again in. for some So it's some not the great separation time. like it is the great resignation. <laughs> exactly. Thank exactly. you so much for being with us, Jacqueline. We're celebrating National Divorce Month here, <laughs> apparently. Uh, thank you, Jacqueline, for being with us again, and everyone at home, stick around. We've got more America Trends. We've got more guests, lots more show coming up right after this break.